you know, we need to create some common sense, <laughs> you know? Whatever goes on, however you go into this world about, that's what's missing. I mean, it's serious, you know, as human beings, we all have, we're all familiar with it. We have five senses or whatever, but that sixth sense is really a common sense and it's something that we all carry. While I was there, I saw the Iraqi soldiers come into the hospital with guns. They took the babies out of the incubators. Took the incubators and left the children to die on the cold floor. And there's not a whole lot of it being projected out into reality anymore. There's just all these distorted emotional fears and reactionary things that aren't really well thought out. You know, and the power of our intelligence. You know, it's how I, I know to show to me to show respect to the Creator and the sacred. We must show respect to our intelligence because the kind, the strength of the respect we can show to Creator and the sacred can only be reflected by the strength that we show to, to our own intelligence. This is about to me about respecting the Creator and about respecting the sacred. Respect our intelligence. It is our medicine, it's our protection, our self-defense. It's the only medicine and protection and self-defense we have, really. I mean, that's just reality, and it's how clearly we use our intelligence to think. The energy and power of our intelligence, this is how much power we have individually. And they had kids in incubators, and they were thrown out of the incubators so that Kuwait could be systematically dismantled. Because uh, the main reason we went into Iraq at the time was we thought he had weapons of mass destruction. It turns out he didn't. Have you ever had the situation where you felt powerless? And then while you're feeling powerless, how bad can you make yourself feel with your fears, doubts, and insecurity? And how does that affect the people around you that you interact with? That's power. And he said, we all got power, so whatever's going on, all right, we have power. It's just an example of power used incoherently. It's an example of power used chaotically. It's not an example of power used clearly and coherently. And you're entering into a dimensional reality that's <laughs> a future that's looming ahead of us. That's going to be in many ways a repetition of the past. You know, there's hard, I mean, it's, <laughs> reality is closing in and you all have to enter in, you're entering into it from a whole different level than me. I'm leaving it. I'm, a, I'm at that age, you know, I'll be gone in some period of time. But you're entering into something that we, we tried to fix, but we couldn't, but we couldn't quite pull it off because, because in my opinion, we emotionally reacted to things more than we really clearly and coherently thought our behaviors and our paths out. And for us, you know, to respect our intelligence, I, ha I emphasize that to think, to think, to understand there's a difference between thinking and believing. I, to me, to think, to everything's about energy, everything's about energy, everything is about energy. We are human beings, the being part the being part is our spirit, but in a technologic perceptual reality, that spirit, that being part is defined and looked at as energy. Everything is about energy. Everything has energy. Everything has energy because our DNA, our bone, flesh, and blood, we're made up of the metals, minerals, and liquids of the earth, and we have, we have being. Being comes from our relationships with the sun, sky, universe. All things of the earth are made up of the same DNA. Same metals, minerals, and liquids. All things of the earth have same relationship to the universe. All things have being. We're in a technological perceptual reality where being is defined as energy, and energy is to be consumed. This is the reality that we're in. And our energy, our spirit, is being consumed by distortions and chaos that we don't truly understand. And people go around feeling like something's missing from their lives, and that's what's missing, is this, is this this recognition of who we are, this recognition of our relationship, our true relationship to the sacred and the power of being a human being. Our power comes from how we perceive, how we perceive reality. Our being, protect the being, keep the being alive. I hear too many times, you know, well, we're only human. No, we're not. We're human being. We're human being, visible, visible, and invisible, visible. We're human being, and when we believe in the patterns that I'm only human, see, we're missing it. We're missing the most important part of ourselves, the being part, because the being continues. We're temporarily human, but the being, and whatever's going on in this dimensional reality that we're in, it's about an evolution of being. It's not really about an evolution of human, it's an evolution of being. How we get through this dimensional experience that we have as beings. We come from being, we take human form and go back to being. How we experience this journey that we go through 
and, and this, this, this physical experience has got to do with the strengthening and evolution of being, which is, because we're in a, you know, it's a spiritual reality. It's not a material reality, it's a spiritual reality. We're way back to now the power of our intelligence. To believe. See, it, it, these are, it, it's a very, we need to be very careful with some of the terminology because to me it's like a minor language. But we need to be careful with some of the terminology because to believe, I mean in actuality, means I don't know. I <laughs> mean in reality, when I say I believe, I'm saying I don't know. You know, in reality. And, and I think that this really needs to be thought about because everything's about energy and when we think, we project electromagnetic thought. Energy is meant and intended to flow. So when we think we're projecting electromagnetic thought, when we think clearly and coherently, we will we will attract clarity and coherency. But when we but if we if we just settle for the laziness of believing, I believe, I believe, I believe, that means that we're shutting off the thinking. We're not thinking anymore. Because it's well, because we believe, so that means you don't have to think. <clears throat> and all thinking <clears throat> All thinking gets limited by the definitions and prejudices of the belief. See, so these are concepts we really need to be careful with, and especially as artists, because it's about creating solutions. There is no solution that exists right now to solve the problems other than to create it by respecting our, showing our respect to the sacred by respecting our intelligence and using it as clearly and coherently as we can. You know, we, we have power, that's, you know, and to recognize that we are human beings. Recognize who we are. See, they, they have taken the identity of human being and replaced it with victim identities. Every identity now is a victim identity. You're a victim identity if you're a male. It's a victim identity if you're a female. It's a victim identity if you're this race. It's a victim identity if you're this religion. It's a victim identity if you're this sexual orientation. We're human beings. And this is where our power is in recognizing that we're human beings. Human beings, the two things together, human beings. We are human beings, and it's time to recognize that we are human beings because that's the reality of our power is. When we believe in this reality from the perception of a, of a victim identity, then we never have the power. We never have it. This is just a reality because we never feel it. So we're human beings. And the other thing I want to put to this is our responsibility as human beings. Our responsibility as human beings is to recognize reality, not to judge it. To recognize, recognize the reality of the situation that we're in and then we will be able to really truly see it and understand it. If we judge it, we can't recognize it because our judgment, the judging it is limited by the biases and prejudices. It's just like the belief. Let our ener the energy of our intelligence flow. Let our creative minds be free. See, I'm not a freedom advocate. I like the idea of being free. I don't trust freedom. It ends in dumb, and I just don't trust it. <laughs> that was me, though, but I'm crazy, remember? All right? So, but I understand the concept of being free because being, that's part of who I am. I don't like to think that dumb is part of who I am. So I want to read a poem. This is called Moments Are Shapes. And then life is a decision we make. And moments are the shapes those decisions take. And evolution is a way of wandering through time. Somewhere between birth and someplace before death. Something from the past. Today brings for tomorrow. Wander dizzy or wander alert and wonder about what. Could be some leftovers from the next last go round. And when the merry-go-round isn't feeling that merry. Time to remind the tears a smile is just a smile away. Laughter brings us memories waiting for us to catch up in realities of catching up to where we've already been. Through the good and the bad and the way flux fluxes and nothing's been done that hasn't been done before. So the redoing is about redoing the same but different and the ride is a hell of a ride if that's the ticket we buy. Insane ideas of pain is more acceptable than pleasure and ideas of guilt by birth are what makes it acceptable. Turning light that's supposed to be light into a burden. Walls and dead ends and windows behind locked pines. While in a conspiracy of reality, the moon and the stars join with the sun in a sending of more light for replenish. 
Every day brings more chances to ride the ride different. Every breath we take can be fresh breath in many ways. And in the choices between depressings and blessings, what we decide is what we create, is our show to star in.